Hello, I'm Craig Buss, uh, president of the Upper Midwest AC Club. Uh, we sponsor and put on the show called the Orange Spectacular uh, here in Hutchinson, Minnesota, located at the McLeod County Fairgrounds. This is our 28th year. Our featured tractor this year was the 220. We had 16 220 front wheel assist show up to the show this year. Overall tractor attendance was about 220. Our field demo feature this year was a 100 series plowing team, uh, starting with the 160 all the way up to a 190 XT. Uh, we also had a 220 plow uh, with an on-land plow, six bottoms. Uh, next year, uh, we plan on doing the exact same thing with only more people, more tractors. Uh, so it's a free show. Come on out to Hutchinson. We enjoy to have you. This is Marvin Matson, world famous farmer and auctioneer. I'm Russ Pellegard, <laughs> <laughs> retired Alice Chalmers dealer. Uh, we're here at Hutchinson, Minnesota, just telling old time stories. And How many, few, what years were you in business? Uh, my dad started business in 1944, 
and uh, Elvis Chalmers took our contract in 75. So my, my dad started during the Second World War. I think the first year he got one tractor and two discs and one corn picker or plow or something like that. And then from there we went on and and uh, uh, he sold a lot of WD-45s in the, in the 50s, sold a lot of WDs. We've got a, uh, a sales picture here. And it was in the paper, and you could buy a brand new 1948. You could buy a new WD for $1,780. You could buy a new 60 combine for $1,000. And a baler, round baler for $1,050. Well, tell us about when you took the 190 XT out for a plowing demonstration. Oh, these 190 XTs, you know, they had a blower on them, and they would put out more than a 94 horsepower. They come right out of the factory about 130 horsepower. So we had, we had a good tractor to demonstrate with. So I had one all weighted down with the inside weights and outside weights, front weights, flew it all the way around. So it was weighted down real good and it was putting out about 140 horse. That was our demonstrator. And we could pull five bottoms anywhere, alfalfa or anywhere. <clears throat> so we'd go out and demonstrate. So this guy got us out and he had a case. <laughs> Had a case, 1030, which had put out 110 horse, and he came out with a seven bottom plow, and we had a five. Of course, they both plowed really good in the stubble. So the the farmer said, "Well, let's try them in the alfalfa." So we went over the alfalfa field, and the case dealer said, "Well, why don't you strike out a land, Russ?" So I struck out a land with the five bottom, and then he started out with his seven, and he could just barely, barely pull it. I'd come up behind him and bump the tail wheel with the front <laughs> wheel of my XT-190. <laughs> yeah. By the time we got to the other end, he waved me on and had me plow down. But he was a pretty cagey old dealer, too. They got about halfway down, and he unhooked his plow. Come up to the end, and he said, Russ, he says, I, I got a hydraulic leak. Would you pull my plow to the end? He'd left it in the ground. <laughs> so I said, well, yeah, I'll, I'll give it a try. So when I hooked on, the farmer threw his cap on the ground and he said, I'll bet you $100 you can't plow it under. <laughs> yeah. Of course, I had him for power and weight. And I took off in third gear and pulled that plow. <laughs> we got to the end, he got in his pickup and went home. <laughs> <laughs> so we had, we had a pretty good show. Another time we went out against G1000, Moline. <clears throat> we had a five bottom plow. We actually had the same plows, they were both Oliver, uh, Moline Oliver plows. He had a five bottom, we had a five bottom. So we had the fuel dealer out there. He filled them up. They were both full in the morning. And then we plowed till I forget noon or whatever it was. And seeing who used the last fuel. And of course with that blower on there, we, we were pretty economical. So we plowed against a G1000, which was a big tractor, a lot bigger tractor. And we plowed against the 1030, and, and a, 40 twins and 20s and 806s were nothing to, to beat them because they only put out 90, a little over 90 horse. And uh, uh, so we, we had a pretty good, pretty good plowing outfit. Yeah, and at, at the same time, they had the, the D21 was out, but the D10, D21 without a blower on it only put out 110 horsepower. So our XT 190s would put out 20 horse more than the D21 would, and a lot cheaper in price. So we didn't sell any D21s because they we could do more with the XT with less money. The only problem was with the XTs we tore all the rear ends out. <laughs> they had a, they came out with a two pinion rear end, and that was the same as the D19, the 70 horsepower rear end. Then they went to a three pinion. You could still tear them out. They went to four pinion like the 200 head, and then they held. Then it was, it was a good tractor. But by that time, we had such a bad reputation, we couldn't sell 190 XTs anymore.
commander is going to try test driving a few newer tractors that we have. Yeah. Okay, okay and then you hit the black button to start the engine. Okay.
My name's Nolan and I'm nine. What's your favorite part of the Orange Spectacular? Um, the tractor pulling and looking at all the tractors. What's your favorite Ellis Chalmers tractor? The 220. 220, the front wheel assist or the regular? The front wheel assist. Yep, they're pretty cool. How many years have you been coming to the Orange Spectacular? Mm, I don't know, quite a few. About as long as you can remember? Mm-hmm. How many Alice Chalmers tractors do you have? Like 10 or 15. Yeah. Very good. Are you going to be doing the obstacle course at Heat Wall again this year in a couple weeks? Yeah, probably. Well, cool. We'll see you there. All right. Thank you. My name is Larry Grunberger, and this is a tow tractor. It's a D19. It was used at the proving grounds on the test track to load down tractors. Here you see just one tow tractor, but as the tractors got bigger and bigger, 
It took more tow tractors to pull the load. On the, pull the load down on the pulling tractor. You were in charge of the proving grounds? Yes, for the last five years. Okay, where was the proving grounds located? It was located in Franksville, Wisconsin. Okay. Which is south of Milwaukee. Okay. And, and north of Union Grove. Union Grove. I suppose the proving grounds closed when Deutsch bought them out? Yes. It was, it was, it was purchased by someone else. Okay. And this is a very, very, very neat piece of equipment. I'm surprised to see it survived. Well, I'm told that whoever purchased it didn't use it very much. Okay. And it was stored in a barn for about the last 12 to 15 years. Uh, but we took pretty good care of these tractors. Mm -hmm. And uh, now if you look at the tow tractor, you see that big con concrete weight. The reason for the weight is we didn't put fluid in the tires. Okay. Because we didn't want to get a leak on the track and spill that calcium chloride all over the track, which it would just then mess up the traction for tractors. And oh, now okay. these these tractors, they would run two different tests. One is called continuous heavy load. And continuous heavy load. The tractor would go round and round the test track on a specified load, pulling the pulling tractor down to rated speed. The other test was breakdown. On breakdown, the pulling tractor would be loaded again down to rated speed. And with the tractor moving, the operator would push in the clutch. It would roll to a stop, and then he would just have the engine running at full speed, and he would just slip his foot off the clutch. The clutch would pop out. It would be a big jerk. The front wheels bounce a little bit, and the tractor would gradually pick the load up to full load. 30 seconds later, he pushed the clutch in and do it all over again. And for the big tractors, You'd get 60,000 of those pops was a, was a successful test. And you would run some cycles in every one of the gears. The same with continuous heavy load. The 1,200 hours was split up in segments for each gear. And the amount would depend on how much you operated that gear. How, how do you run this? You you have to put the, you engage the transmission. Well, first of all, there's a valve on the exhaust system. So that makes the engine run like an air compressor. Okay. The engine actually rotates the powertrain. Uh, the load is, comes through the rear wheels, through the powertrain, to the engine. The transmission on the tow tractor you try to you set that so that the engine speed that the track that this tractor had when it was a real tractor you don't want to exceed that speed so you pick the gear on the tow tractor and then you match it to the speed on the pulling tractor and you can and then to get the finite load to zero it in there's a valve on the exhaust system and you just open and close that valve to get the load that you want. And if you have, the bigger the tractor, the more tow tractors it takes. Because one tow tractor will provide the load of about half of what it did as a pulling tractor. So it was a, it was a, un, it was un, it was very common to have big tractors to have five or six tow tractors behind the pulling tractor. And you had, you could adjust the load with the valve, and then on this tractor, you had a high and low range, so you could use that too. And, and the operator that, op, that was setting the load, he would go from tow tractor, tow tractor on this platform, and he'd set the load on, on each tow tractor. Very neat load. That, that's a picture of 
I actually on the proving grounds uh, pulling up. That's a that's a prototype 7000 series tractor pulling those six tow tractors. And if if you notice, none of the tow tractors have these dolly wheels because when you, then we could transfer some of the front weight of the tow tractor on the pulling tractor. But when we didn't want that weight transfer, then we would put the dolly wheels on. Okay. Well, very neat. Well, thank you for sharing this with us. It's very, very, very nice. Well, I'm glad to, uh, I'm glad to do it.
land handler. A lot of tractor for the big farmer with a lot of acres to cover, a tight schedule to meet, and a shortage of manpower to do it. A tractor with adjustable treads to meet your needs. Big strength and capacity throughout. Short turning radius and big hydraulic power. One hundred and thirty-five horsepower strong, turbocharged for extra go and fast response. The Alice Chalmers 220, a big tractor for the man with big ambition. Bring on those tough acres. The land handler is ready.